Hello and welcome back to PSD Tuts Plus and the Shortcut series. I'm Martin Perhiniak and today we are going to continue designing this postcard. These are the effects that we created in the previous episode and I'm going to show you the final result which will look like something similar to this. On the way of adding this banner in the background and creating that color effect on the soldier, we are going to discuss some really useful features of Photoshop. Let me go back to the Photoshop document and show you the layers we already have here. We have the original soldier layer, then we have the retouch to get rid of a couple of distracting elements. Then we have a vignette using a vector mask and feathering. On top of that we have a frame which just creates this white stroke around the whole image. So now we can get started and creating uh, the effect to get the soldier in uh, bright red colors and turn everything else in black and white. So let me use uh, the quick selection tool, select the soldier layer and create a very quick selection. So it's just a quick and rough selection. It's a bit too much here at the bottom so I'm just holding down Alt to remove from the selection. So something like that and then here on the head I also make the selection. Now I can alt click to draw over parts which I don't need in the selection as well here on the top something like that and I'm not really sure about that part yet but I can keep these parts here a bit loose at the bottom because the ground is already uh, grayscale so it won't be a big problem if I turn that into uh, black and white. So now I can go to the adjustments panel and on the top of my retouch layer I create a black and white adjustment layer. This will first turn everything black and white on the selection that we created, but we, win, we want the opposite of this. So I go to the properties panel, select the mask and choose invert. So I inverted the whole thing. You can always press command I. So now everything which we selected before turns into colors and everything else around it turns into black and white. Now we can always go closer to um, the image. Let me just zoom closer and I'm going to use the brush tool and draw over these parts here. So I can use the, um, in this case, the black brush to hide the black and white effect on the image and just go over these parts. At the bottom it looks fine. Here again I can go over a bit on the edges. Again here on the edges and then here on the top I can hide colors from the background and the other parts look pretty good. Maybe here a couple of feathers I can uh, show its original colors. So something like that will be probably enough. If I zoom out we can have a look at it and it looks quite good. We can always use a vibrance adjustment layer just to pop these colors even more. We can go back to adjustments and a vibrance adjustment layer and increase the vibrance. Of course this will only affect uh, the soldier because everything else is turned into black and white so the vibrance will only be visible on the soldier. But that's what I wanted to achieve so let's see before the effect and after the effect. Okay, that looks quite good. And now we can create a banner for the text. Because if we create the text and there's no banner, then it will be hard to read it. But let me show you how I create the text first. So I use the type tool, I click, and I'm going to type in lost in Rome. Oh, sorry, not room, Rome, like that. Okay, let me make it smaller and I'm going to press command backspace to fill it with white because that was my background color and I also double click on the icon and change the font to Tryon Pro and make it a bit smaller using the free transform and shift uh, dragging one of the corner points. Now first of all I would like to make the in part smaller so I select it with the type tool and then command shift and comma to make it smaller and then also alt shift up arrow to move it up a bit that's the baseline shift so something like that I wanted to achieve okay then we can also change the color of room into red okay let's just change this to red I click on the color and pick a color from the red cape of the soldier something like that I click on okay 
so it starts to look uh, better but the problem is we can't really read it properly because the background is so busy even if I add an effect I double click on the type layer and I add a drop shadow it will be still difficult to read it by the way if I click on the image now that I have the drop shadow selected I can always move the, the effect itself around I will keep this effect on, on the layer but I have to do something to make this more visible I am going to create a vector shape layer so I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I draw a rectangle here for a frame creating a frame and I move it this one behind the type layer so I move it below it like that now it is much easier to read but maybe it just covers too much of the image itself so let me reduce the opacity of this okay reduce the opacity so I can see a little bit of the background now I would like to define this a little bit even more so I'm going to add another uh, effect and on in this case on the banner itself I am going to add a white stroke on it so that I double click on it add stroke inside and I choose again white color and I will probably use something around like six pixel width the reason why it's also transparent the white stroke let me just zoom a bit closer the reason why it's transparent is because we use the opacity for this layer and reduced it down but if I set that back to 100% and reduce the fill down instead of the opacity then the strokes will be visible okay the strokes will be visible and only the content itself will be transparent so I set the fill somewhere around 60% while keeping the opacity on 100% will make sure that the strokes will be visible the only thing I would like to do is to put this uh, rectangle on top of the vignette layer and then move the text as well on top of that so the vignette can be below it like this and then the strokes will come all the way to the edges completely white so if I zoom closer now it looks like it's attached to the frame okay so now it looks better but still we have to work a little bit on this first of all we have to tie the two things together a bit more the, the banner and the image itself as I said it still covers a bit too much from the original image so how can we help that we should move this banner behind the soldier how can we do that though because the soldier is not on a separate layer now, I want to do this completely non-destructively as well just like all our other effects so what we can do is select the mask from the black and white adjustment layer and alt click and drag that onto the banners layer so let me call that layer banner by the way that rectangle so you can see now I copied the mask of the black and white adjustment layer which had the uh, soldier selected I copied that onto the banner layer but the problem is that the stroke will follow the selection so it goes around the selection and it doesn't look really nice I would like to get rid of these white details here how can I do that this is something that I discussed earlier in this series but let me show you the same uh, option but used for this banner so let me just double click on the banner layer and use this option called layer mask hides effects so the mask of the soldier will also hide the effects and that's what I need if I turn it on it just gets rid of that part there so now I can click OK so the mask not only hides the content itself which is the rectangle but it also hides the stroke effect so it won't be visible it nicely looks like it goes behind the soldier and if I zoom closer a bit I can make the mask a little bit even finer I can always work on this I use the um, in this case white color and show the banner here and then also draw over there and maybe draw over this part here as well a bit just to get rid of these bright details so you can see now we have almost everything in place the last thing I would probably add is a bit of a gradient overlay on the text so I double click on that add gradient overlay and change the blend mode to multiply just to keep the color visible and then or maybe let's just try overlay 
yeah, overlay looks even better, and then just reduce the effect a little bit, something like that. So now we can see everything came together, and of course from this point on we can always play around with the type, and I can use uh, kerning to move some uh, details closer to each other, especially with uh, all caps font, it's important to spend some time with kerning, like here still between the O and the M, I move this closer, I'm, by the way I'm just using old left and right arrows on the keyboard, to uh, customize the um, distance between the characters. So you can see this was before, and this is after. This was before, and this is after. Minor adjustments like this can uh, get you far in Photoshop, if you, if you look for these little differences. And I can always go back and change whatever I want. The great thing is that I can even detach the mask of this rectangle, and then I select it together with the text and I can move it around and it still will be behind the soldier. So I can go all the way on the top or below and everything will work exactly the way we set it up. So that's again a huge advantage of working completely non-destructively. You can do a, a very quick changes if you have everything still accessible. So let's just have a look at the original image. I alt click on the eye icon of that and see the uh, postcard. So once again, before and after. So in this example, we used again, adjustment layers, masking, vector masks, uh, layer styles, blending options, and retouch tools in the beginning. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you join me next time, you can learn more about sharpening techniques in Photoshop. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.